There are two types of errors that can happen when you're doing hypothesis testing. So the first one is called a type 1 error, and this happens when you reject the null hypothesis but it actually was true. So think about what this means. With your distribution, you're saying that H0 was true, your null hypothesis was correct, so this distribution holds. So which portions of that would tell you to reject it? Of course that's here, it's the significance level. Say we were doing it at 5%, then 5% of that graph would um, give us values that were rejected when we should have actually accepted them. So the probability of a type 1 error is really easy to pick out. It's simply the significance level of your test. And this is where, um, when you looked at questions earlier on and you changed the significance level, it um, changed whether you would accept or reject the null hypothesis. So the significance level that you do things to makes quite a big difference. Um, and if the consequences of your hypothesis being rejected or accepted are quite severe, then you would do a really high significance level, a really sm you know small amount of getting that wrong. Um, but if the cons consequences weren't dire, you know, like somebody's not going to die or something like that, then um, you might set your your significance level to be um, larger than uh, what you had would have done previously. Okay, now the other type is a type 2 error, and that's the other way round. So this is when you accept the null hypothesis, but actually it was false. This one's a little harder to um, work out. Um, so this is where you've got the probability that you accepted the null hypothesis given that your alternative was true. So to work this one out, we actually need to know some details for the alternative hypothesis. We would know, need to know what the new parameters were for the alternative. So let's show you how to do this. Uh, we've got a machine that's filling up water bottles. Um, the amount put into each bottle is normally distributed with mean 1.002 litres and a standard deviation of 0 0.002. Um, the machine's tested regularly by taking samples of nine bottles and calculating the mean volume. I'm going to set up a hypothesis test to check if the machine is working correctly and find the rejection region for a test at the 5% significance level. OK, so our null hypothesis is that the mean is 1.002, and the alternative is that it has changed. Now, if our null hypothesis is true, then we get this normal distribution. And we're going to do a 5% significance level. It's a change, so we need to do a two-tailed test, 2.5 two on either side. And reading off Z values, we know that's 1.96 and minus 1.96. So our rejection region will happen when the modulus of z is greater than or equal to 1.96. So then if we standardise our test statistic and then rearrange, that tells us that x bar has to be above 1.0033 or below 1.0007 for us to reject the null hypothesis. Now we're going to need to go on to a new slide for the next bit. We're going to give the probability of a type 1 error. Now this is just the significance of uh, the significance level of our test. So this is 5% or 0 0.05. And then find the probability of a type 2 error if the mean has changed to 1 litre. So you'll notice we need to be given what the new mean is to be able to work out the probability of a type 2 error. So this is the probability that our null hypothesis was accepted given that H1, H0 was false. So we actually have a mean we, well, we had um, a mean to start with of 1.002, but the real mean is 1.000. Okay, so we've got these two different distributions. So here we've got the values that would have been accepted on H0. Those are the parts we worked out on um, part A. So in between those two values would have been accepted on H0. So now we need to work out what's the chances of getting within that region on the new distribution, given that the mean is 1 instead of 1.002. So it's this portion here. Anything that would have ended up between those two numbers, but on that purple distribution, so to the right of 1.0007. So we work out the probability of that happening on that distribution. And we get the following numbers. And you can read those off the tables. Now, I didn't pick particularly good numbers here because 4.95 isn't on your normal distribution table. You would be given a number you could actually look up, but we can just assume that that's 0 0.999 a lot for a long time. Um, and then take off the 0 0.8531 from the phi of 1.05.
Okay, next example. Packets of jelly beans have a mass which is normally distributed with a mean mu and standard deviation 15. Simon thinks that the jelly beans have been made smaller. He thinks it's a conspiracy to uh, charge more for less jelly beans in the packets. So, um, he thinks that the mass has decreased and tests it at a 5% significance level with the null hypothesis that the mean is 375 and alternative that it's less than that. Um, and used a sample of 16. So, what values of the sample mean would lead to H0 being accepted? So, our null hypothesis is accepted. We're looking for the acceptance region. So, we are doing a 5% significance level uh, on a one-tailed test. That gives us a Z value of minus 1.645. So, if we standardise our test statistic, we're looking for the acceptance, so we want it to be more than the minus 1.645. Rearrange that and we get 368.83 for our sample mean. So anything above that would lead to our null hypothesis being accepted. Right, now given that the actual value of the mean was 372, find the probability of making a type 2 error. So we're looking for the probability that we accept the null hypothesis, but the mean was actually 372. Now we've got um, our normal following... Uh, uh, sample mean following the normal distribution with a new mean of 372 instead of 375. So we want the probability that x is above that value we just worked out in the first part, meaning it would get accepted, but following the new distribution with a mean of 372. So what we can conclude from this is that there's a 19.9% .9 chance that we would accept the null hypothesis and state that there's been no change when the mean had actually dropped to 372 grams.